Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with another video and today we'll be doing a mock draft for the New York Jets with trades this time. So before we get started, just wanted to mention you can follow me on social media at Matt O'Leary and why if you haven't already, please make sure to check out the podcast wherever it is you get your podcast and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. All right, so this one's gonna be slightly different as I have trades involved. I'm going to make a trade. Spoiler alert, it's just one. But without further ado, let's get into it. Round one, pick two. This one seems pretty obvious at this point, but I think Zach Wilson's the safe bet there. Tons of reasons to be excited about a player like Zach Wilson, obviously a riser this year. I would say probably small percentage that it's Justin Fields. I, I've i said it a million times, I'm not anti-Justin uh, Fields. I just think Zach Wilson's going to be the pick. Makes a ton of sense in this offense, can do a lot of great things can push the ball down the field, which is something that I'm excited about because the Jets didn't really have that with Sam Darnold. Um, even coming in, we pretty much knew that Darnold wasn't someone who was going to get the ball down the field. Uh, that never really developed. So with Wilson, you're not going to have to worry about that. It's the level of competition and stuff like that that maybe you want to worry about. But overall, really good prospect that the Jets land number two overall. Round one, pick 23, Creed Humphrey, the center from Oklahoma. The Jets desperately need interior offensive line help. I don't think they are trading up to get an Elijah Vera Tucker or anyone like that. So I think they stay put, take the best interior offensive lineman available, which I think would be Humphrey at this point. He can play center. You move McGovern over to guard at that point, and you see what he can do there. Yes, I know in free agency, that supposedly the Jets weren't in on Lindsley because they like McGovern at center, but I don't really know or trust the Jets beat with what they think on Joe Douglas. I, I think they've been wrong a lot. So um, maybe they don't go center, but I don't think it's a lock that they are guaranteed not to go center in this draft. With the Jets round two pick, here's where I have my trade. I think the Jets trade out of this pick and a team like Vegas, who likes to do crazy things in the draft and, and move up and stuff like that, trades up. So I have them giving pick 48 and 80. They have two picks back to back in the third round. So they are giving one of those picks to jump all the way up to 34. So the Jets drop back to 48. They pick up another third round pick in the process. And with round two, pick 48, I have Elijah Molden, the cornerback from Washington. Now, this is a slot corner. He's someone who could come in and play right away, which is something the Jets need because Javelin Guidry, I do not trust as a starting slot corner. Also, I they have not re-signed Brian Poole, which is something they still can do, of course. But as you look in this roster, they need another outside corner and they need a slot corner. So I have them taking the best slot corner in this class with pick 48. Round three, pick 66, I have Eric Stokes, the cornerback from Georgia. He's someone who I think could even go as early as the second round, but wouldn't be stunning if he's there in round three. Uh, he has good size, 6'1", 194, and he's a former track athlete, which is something that Joe Douglas seems to like. He drafted Ashton Davis, who was the same thing. Really good athlete, twitchy. I think he's someone who could project as a starter. And let's face it, Robert Sala has gotten a lot out of corners similar to him. Good athletes who are in the mid to later rounds in the draft with some high upside, which is exactly what Stokes is in my eyes. So I have them grabbing him and hoping that he's a plug and play player for them on the outside. Round three, pick 80. I'm going Deontay Brown, the guard from Alabama. He's huge, maybe a little bit too huge. 6'3", 344. Could probably afford to lose a couple of pounds, especially if he's going to want to uh, run block in space. But he is a really good run blocker because of his size to begin with. I guess kind of similar issues or, or critiques of Makai Becton early on. So maybe they would go someone this route because of his size, like we saw from Makai Becton. I think Deontay Brown is someone who can play, uh, right away, but you don't necessarily need him to if you're moving McGovern over. You can maybe survive with a Greg Van Roten, or if you take another interior offensive lineman later, wink, wink, maybe I'm doing that. So I, I think he's someone who can be a solid run blocker at the next level. I do think he's going to have to drop a couple pounds, though. Round three, pick 86. I'm taking tight end Tommy Tremble from Notre Dame, 6'3", 241. In addition to him being a really good athlete, He's a good blocker too, like a really good blocker. So he is someone who is an all-around tight end. He is not just someone who's going to catch the ball and not give you anything in the run game. Yes, I am still high on Chris Herndon, but I think it'd be a lot of fun to have a guy like Tommy Tremble and Chris Herndon in sets. And with that extra third round pick, I felt comfortable doing that if I'm the New York Jets. So yeah, I went tight end in this one. Let me know what you guys think of it.
Round four, pick 107. The Jets need a speedster at wide receiver. How about Anthony Schwartz from Auburn? He's a former track athlete. He's a deep threat with some good size, six foot 186. He's definitely a burner up top, which is exactly what the Jets need. They have Mims and Davis who are similar, who are a little who are good yard after the catch, but they're not like a prototypical take the top off a of defense like threat. So it would be a nice change of pace than what they have, even with Crowder. Like Crowder in the slot isn't someone who's gonna, you know, really push the ball down the field he's good over the middle and stuff like that but anthony schwartz i think would add something to this receiving core that they don't really have right now round five pick 146 i'm going running back khalil herbert from virginia tech explosive and patient runner and he's a great pass catcher out of the backfield which is something that you need to have in a kyle shanahan like offense which is going to be run for the new york jets i think they look for a mid-round guy you can take someone like a kenny gainwell in round three i decided to wait a little bit and go for some value so a mix of herbert and on top of Ty Johnson and on top of Tevin Coleman, that's really, I think, going to be the three-headed running back monster. Someone you draft in the mid-rounds this year, Tevin Coleman and Ty Johnson. I, th- I think those three get the most carries this year. Round five, pick 154. I'm going with Garrett Wallow, a linebacker from TCU. Good football IQ, played both linebacker and safety, so you know that he can cover out of the backfield, which is something the Jets need help with. A former team captain, he's a leader. A good athlete overall, and we know how much Joe Douglas likes team captains. He drafted a ton of captains last year, so this just this pick just screams Douglas and Robert Sala, and I think they'd be able to get a lot out of this kid. So look for them to go with a linebacker in the mid rounds, also. Round six, pick 186, Larry Borum, offensive tackle slash guard from Missouri. He's versatile with some really good size, so he can play on the inside or the outside. Obviously, has some flaws to his game if he's a sixth round pick. He's not someone who you could probably play from day one, but as a developmental, well, I don't know why that was so hard for me to get out. As a developmental piece, it would be an interesting swing in the later rounds for Joe Douglas, which I don't put it past him taking lots and lots of swings at offensive line in this draft. And with my last pick, round six, pick 226, I'm going Evan McPherson, the kicker from Florida. I know drafting a kicker is kind of lame. It's not usually my bag either, but the Jets desperately need help at the position. And with so many draft picks in this draft class, I traded back and got another one too. I think you can afford to take one if the best kicker in this class is still sitting on the board at that point. So I don't have an issue. If he's going to take more than 10 people in this draft and one of them's a kicker, you're not going to see me crying over it. So that's my mock draft. Just to run through really quick one more time, Wilson at pick two, Humphrey pick 23. I am trading out of pick 34 for pick 48 and 80. I'm taking Elijah Molden at pick 48, 66, Eric Stokes. Then Deontay Brown at 80, Tommy Tremble at 86, Anthony Schwartz at 107, Khalil Herbert, the running back from Virginia Tech at 146, Garrett Wallow at 154, Larry Burham, and Evan McPherson to round out the draft class. So let me know what you think down in the comments below or on social media at Matt O'Leary and why. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and I will talk to you next time.